Hey guys, Pastor Preston is my name. I'm very excited to uh, be coming your way today by the instruction of the Spirit to bring you these great holy messages, uh, holy words from the Lord, and I want you to pay attention to it. And today I'll be talking about contentment. Contentment. You know, this is one very, um, one very easily ignored um, thing, but um, very powerful thing. As a matter of fact. If you are truly a believer who knows God, you always know how to be content. That's the truth. You always know how to, right? Because um, when you see in that scripture, Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 13, where Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That scripture talks about contentment, as a matter of fact. Okay, if you read the storyline, you will understand that I was primarily speaking about contentment. Okay, let me try to see if I could show you that. Okay, Philippians chapter number 4 from 11, 11 to 13. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content. Did you see this? Say, I have learned to be content in what, whatever circumstance I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned to I have learned the secret of being filled and un, and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So, in other words, it says the strength of Christ causes him to do all things. The strength of Christ causes him to do all things. Glory to God, somebody. So, Paul said, I've learned of Christ, you know, to be content, right? Um, you know, they say man's want is insatiable. That's what economy says. But, you see, that's for ordinary men, not for spiritual men. Remember, remember in Romans 14, it says, the kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace and joy in the holy ghost unfortunately you get a lot of cue in the counseling place in church a lot of members come in for counseling and all um, let's say from 50 to 60 or 80 percent of the people who are coming for counseling they are all always asking about a need problem a need problem when you hear somebody feeling frustrated is frustrated because of one need or the other need that is not met right and then i'm asking what are you doing with christ because christ should have taught you contentment paul said that Christ has taught me contentment. So if we truly are growing in the spirit, you always will learn to be content. Glory to God, right? Bible said in, in, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter number uh, 6 from verse number 5, it says, godliness is not a means of gain. Can I sound that again? It says, godliness is not a means of gain. You need to understand it, right? Because the blessings that we have received, it's a blessing in heavenly places. And you cannot comprehend this as long as you walk in the flesh. You must need to walk in the spirit for you to understand that blessings of the spirit. That's why the true believer who is growing in Christ understand that, that understand eternal life can never be depressed because he never puts a hope on anything material. He puts his hope and love in Jesus and eternal life. Glory to God, somebody. So Paul said, I've learned to be content. I have learned to be content. Glory to God. Still in that first uh, Timothy chapter number six, if you read from six downwards, what what he says? He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out. Do you see that to really think about it? Are you have you started to imagine a man who died and is going six feet down the ground? What are they going with? Do they go with their car? Do they go with their house? Do they go with their degrees and all of all those things? So why do you want to kill yourself because of that? Why are you struggling, doing everything possible to heap up all these material things? Let me tell you this. The reason why they even have, they, they make sense before you is because you have learned it of this earth. It is the earthly programming that has caused you to learn it that way. And that's beginning to put you on unnecessary pressure. That's even causing you to want to hurt people. Let's read it down. You see something. He said, for we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out. But if we have food and clotting, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desire that plunge men into ruin or destructions. Did you see that? It says they fall into a lot of temptations, right? So in other words, the Christian should not walk to get rich. 
Glory to God. The Christians should only strive to please God, to do the will of the Father, to respond to righteousness, right? And all the things that he needs, Bible says God will provide it. That's what the scripture tells us. In Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Well, and the things he said, all the other things that we need in life, he says they shall be provided. Another scripture says, God knows everything that we need, even before we ask them. He said he knows everything, right? So why don't you relax, okay? And stop putting your mind and saying, oh, this witch is holding me. This person is, is uh, 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 not allowing me to progress or blah, blah. Look at what my mate has done and look at where I am. Your mates too have died, right? Some of them are six feet down the grade. Always graves, always be grateful, always be excited. Choose to be happy whatever place you find yourself and never find yourself get stuck with the challenge of wanting to grab and grab and grab i have never lived my life like that everything that the, God, the lord has given me i'm grateful for them and i celebrate them do i work harder to earn more or to do something great yes i work harder but not to earn more but to impress god to please the will of the father to to fulfill the purpose to which i'm created and then all of all those things i understand that they are blessings from god the bible says a laborer is worthy of his wage okay so god brings the weight but i don't crave for the wage i don't work for the wage i don't labor to grab because i know all these things are vanity give it some years you'll be amazed what used to rain yesterday it's no longer raining today i always like to tell people i said who builds a house first is the one that builds an old school who buys a house a car first is the one that buys an old school when time goes on that's the truth so you got to just relax and be excited because too too many people are getting depressed from all this want want and need or wanting to feel good or want people to clap for you and applaud you that you are excelling in their own senses you, you got to relax okay i got the news of um the the, the finance minister in, of germany who killed himself because of coronavirus not because he's stuck with coronavirus but because he's thinking the the adverse effect on the economy of coronavirus that's so painful that means this guy is living for this earth and not living for eternity remember solomon having done so great things the bible says at one time he started to think and it says all things are vanity but investation of spirit that is in ecclesiastes chapter number two he says i haven't done all this i'm not even sure if i have a good son who will be able to maximize this labor that i've labored right so he begin to feel bad for how much he has you know how much he had think about this so don't kill people kill yourself hurt people or hurt yourself to make any gain because every material gain will go down the drain they are all gonna end up as vanity so live for jesus and be excited about it that's it if jesus as long as he loves you if you're winning so that should bring joy to your to, to, to you and smile to you look your scripture says the heaven rejoices over a sinner that is converted that is what brings joy to, to heaven not the material things that you possess it's so unfortunate today when we find a lot of people even shared testimony in church over material things and not over godly things and the bible says the heaven rejoices over a sinner that is saved so what should bring you so realign your values right let heaven's values become your value let the thing that matters to god become the things that matters to you don't live for this earth live for eternity and be excited about how you live your life glory to god let's go on it says, for the love of money is a root of all kind of evil. Did you see that? Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many grief. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness. Did you see that? What did he tell us to pursue? Not money. He says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love endurance and gentleness so what did he tell you to pursue godliness righteousness godliness faith love endurance and gentleness fight the good fight of faith not fight the good fight to make yourself rich by all means no fight the good fight of faith take all of the Take hold of the et eternal life to which you were called when you made when you made your good confession in the presence of many weakness. Glory to God. That's so interesting. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians uh, 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 chapter number twelve from verse number nine to ten. Very interesting scriptures as well. Hallelujah. Look what it says here. It says 
And he had said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I am well content with weakness. Look at what Paul said. He said, I'm well content with weakness. Now, this is Paul going through a challenge, and Paul is rejoicing in his challenge. Think about this. Glory to God. He says, we preach the gospel in another scripture. We preach the gospel. We have nothing to, 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 to glory about. But he didn't say, well, I'm feeling depressed. Because this guy was not living for materialism. Let's take a lesson from him. Hallelujah. Let's live for Jesus and be proud about it. All those things because a lot of times some of the things that you're laboring for you're just doing them because you want to impress someone. Hallelujah. And those people you're trying to impress sometimes may not even be watching. Okay. And why are you trying to even impress somebody in the first place? The Bible says they competing with themselves and themselves are not wise. Glory to God. Think about this. Then it says therefore I am well content with weakness, with insult, with distress, with persecution, with difficulty for Christ's sake. For when I am weak uh, then I am strong. This man obviously knows God in the spirit because, of course, if he doesn't know God in the spirit, if he was living according to senses, this guy would have been depressed and be thinking of taking his life. Hallelujah. So live according to the will of God and be excited. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 28. It says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Glory to God. All things work together for good. You see, if you read through scripture, you see that he's always talking about content. Contentment. Matthew chapter number 6, right? If you read from, from 23 to 24 down to 33, he was he spoke about contentment, why we must be con why we must we must be contented, right? And then if you read um first Timothy that we read earlier, he also spoke about contentment. If you also read Hebrews chapter number 13, right? Glory to God from, from 5 to 6, he started by saying by speaking about contentment. He says, Let your conversation be with contentment. Glory to God. So, in other words, it says, Let your lifestyle be full of contentment. Hallelujah. Your glory to God, right? Amen. Very important. He says, Let it be full of contentment before he now started dealing with the challenge that he needed to deal with. So, we must always align ourselves in contentment. We must choose to be contented. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be, be satisfied with what you have. Trust God for more, but don't live your life for more. Can I say that again? Trust God for more. Work hard. Do all that you're supposed to do. Call for the things that you need, but never you place your life on it don't allow having or not having determine how you feel how you live how you how your mood goes right it's not proper right otherwise you're gonna you're gonna be disappointed let me say this to you right no matter how much you save no matter how much you work something can happen and wipe all that money one, one economic crisis can just happen and then be trouble right so don't you don't we don't have confidence in this world we only have confidence in christ christ is our confidence christ is our satisfaction christ is our hope christ is our peace christ is our joy if you take all that away from christ i feel sorry for you because this world cannot guarantee you anything at least forever so it's important that you turn your heart away from this word and fix it on god and as you grow in the spirit you discover that no material thing will make sense before you but only eternal things will make sense so live your life with contentment refuse to think of what they are expecting of you or what you want to get or how this blah blah you know when i listen to man they say look at my mates i just get pissed off or they say well why am I going through suffering like this? Look at what other people are. I just get pissed off, right? Work hard for your life. Let the wisdom of God bring you to wealth. But don't leave your life pursuing material things because all of them will fade up with this earth. Think about it. People who are dying of corona right now. Think about it, right? Too many things are happening and these are drawing us to the end time. So we must focus in Christ and refuse to focus with material things and all that. We just heard in Nigeria that uh, there was some kind of a crater created, right? Um, you know, uh, maybe some says, um, it's, a, it's an asteroid and, and, and other says it's some kind of meta it's a meta meta tie to something like that we're not exactly sure but that big thing has just created a big crater destroyed a lot of properties and building what if these people who had that thing right they all that was their retirement benefit for all that they had labor right think this life just enjoy the way god has called you labor for god right fight a good fight of faith and don't live like all that there is, is this earth. And as if you're trying to impress one flesh because all of those people don't really matter. What really matters is God Almighty. So learn to live with great contentment. Thank you for listening to this video. And I believe that you begin to align yourself like this and live excited. The kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy 
all created, brought by the Holy Ghost, all generated by the Holy Ghost, all produced in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So we must give attention to this calling that we have called and live our life according to the will of God and not according to natural people who are religiously serving God. Thank you for listening. I love you so much and I'm ex I, I hope this blessed you and I'll see you again next time.